1st of May at 8 on Sky One. Well, now, David Cameron, Scott's uh, what's described as uh, a rather nice problem. He's spending the weekend picking his new cabinet. Labour MPs got an altogether more intractable one, trying to make sense of their crushing defeat last week. I'm joined now by the Labour MP and Shadow Europe Minister, Pat McFadden. Uh, very good morning to you, Mr good morning. McFadden. I mean, leaving aside plinths and visits to Russell Brand and things like that, what was the, what was the big strategic error from your point of view in the Labour campaign? The big strategic error, or the big strategic judgment, certainly, was Ed Miliband's decision from the get-go to say he was turning the page on New Labour, uh, to portray our period in government as uh, something of a departure from our values uh, and the crushing verdict of the electorate was delivered on that, strate on that strategy. Well, this all Thursday leads night. us back to the demonisation within your very own party about the most successful leader you've ever had of Tony Blair and Mr Miliband made that judgment very early on in his leadership that he had to signal that departure from the Blairite years. That's right. I mean this was partially signalled when Gordon Brown became Prime Minister in 2007. We then lost the 2010 election and then had a much more clear break with New Labour for the last five years. So if there's one thing the voters were clear about in terms of the Labour Party that they were being asked to make a judgment on on Thursday, it was that it was a departure uh, from New Labour. And their verdict on that strategy was very clear because we've been reduced to the levels of political representation that we last had in the 1980s. So is that verdict, your interpretation of that verdict, uh, telling you that uh, they're saying they liked New Labour or just that they didn't like uh, the version of Labour that had evolved over the intervening years? Well, it clearly wasn't enough for us just to be uh, the spokespeople for those struggling on low incomes uh, and the NHS. The Labour Party should always be uh, the voice uh, for those issues, but that's not enough. We have to be the voice for middle income families. Uh, we have to be the voice uh, for wealth creation as well as fair wealth distribution. And I think there's another thing too. I think we need to have a more optimistic story about Britain's future. I think our uh, rhetoric uh, came across as a bit depressing at times. We were good at identifying problems, but we were less good at identifying opportunities. So when I talk about New Labour, I'm not talking about trying to find a rewind button to the 1990s because things have changed, we've got the challenge of nationalism and so on. But what I'm saying is, in this leadership election that we're about to embark upon, what we need is a really deep and fundamental reassessment of our whole right. approach and our whole message. A different version of that, but we've been talking tablets of stone, of course, during the course of the election campaign from the Labour side. Should this be written in a, in a virtual tablet of stone? From Mr Blair, Tony Blair today, the route to the summit lies through the centre ground. Absorb, digest and keep that close to your heart. Is that your view? Well, it certainly worked very well for us uh, for three elections running. We've now lost two elections running on departing from that message. So I don't think the lesson here is particularly difficult to learn. Uh, I think it's pretty clear. And the task now is, as I say, not to find a rewind button, but yeah. to go through as thorough but, and as fundamental but, a reassessment I mean, say all this, this, this all bit. may well apply to England and indeed Wales, but it doesn't apply to your native Scotland, does it? You've, you've got to tack way to the left there to outgun the SNP. Well, I don't know if the answer is to tack way to the left, but one of the changes from the 1990s is this challenge of nationalism. And it's difficult uh, to challenge. We clearly failed to do it uh, in the election just gone. The landslide for the SNP uh, is a new challenge because it's not based on policy. There is no, you know, this is based uh, on a, a sort of national movement uh, which is carrying all before it at the moment. That's a difference from the 1990s. That's why a rewind button is not enough. There are new and different challenges, but what we need is the courage that we had in the 1990s. No holds barred, no rush contests, no picking a candidate who appeals internally at this stage and then is subsequently rejected by the electorate. We need to take our right. time to get this right. Well, an uncompromising analysis there, Mr McFadden. Thanks for that and stay with us because I'm glad to say we're joined by the Shadow Education Secretary, uh, Tristan Hunt. And uh, maybe you've been talked of as a leadership contender. Are you going to be, are you going to throw your hat in the ring? And how much of Mr McFadden's analysis do you agree with? 
Uh, I agree with much of what Pat said. I think there were changes that we've seen in recent years relative to the 1990s and the New Labour era, principally on two areas. I think inequality uh, was much more obvious and deepening because of economic, global economic changes that affected parts of Britain. And that spoke to communities who felt left behind by globalisation. Wage rates were depressed yeah. by immigration. That's the analysis, but you know, the, the, the campaign just gone. You departed from the centre ground, you accept that and you shouldn't have. Is that what he's telling us? Because that's what Mr McFadden, not to put words in his mouth, that's what he's been telling us. But I think that's what the public told us. Um, I think the, the public didn't feel that they could trust us with their economic futures. They didn't feel that we spoke to their sense of cultural and national identity in England mm. and clearly in Scotland as well. And I, I now think we face this, this double bind as a Labour Party. And Pat is absolutely right. We are in a terrible hole. We are a hundred seats behind the Conservative well, Party. We should be in no doubt about but the seriousness But people, people Mr. are going to want to know, well what, well, what did you feel during the course of the campaign? You're not an empty vessel waiting to be filled up by what the electorate tell you. What was in your heart there about where Labour stood just a few days ago? Well, I was certainly shocked by the scale of the loss. I didn't see the scale of the, the loss. Right, did you think it was the right... Well, you know, was it from your heart? Was it conviction that you'd moved to the left with, that, with the party? Well, I, I felt that we could have had a stronger message for those aspirational parts of Britain. Well, you know, the Labour Party is a coalition. We all push our various uh, agendas at various points, but we have a leader and quite rightly we support the leader and we, you know, and we continue to pay tribute to Ed Miliband's leadership uh, uh, during that time. But clearly the electorate have given us a really bloody nose. They've told us they don't trust us. It didn't work. And the lessons I take from this is that we need, as Pat said, an optimistic, progressive vision of the future, which is just which is social democratic and it's just, but it also speaks to the aspirational desires of communities up and down the country. And secondly, that we're more confident about celebrating identity, whether that's English identity or Scottish or Welsh. Well, and I think, well, well, I think there are certain communities left behind by the impact of globalisation who feel under pressure and they went towards UKIP rather than coming uh, to the Labour Party. And so we have both this challenge from the Tories in terms of aspiration, but also yeah. UKIP in terms and of losing Aspiration. Let me ask yeah. you some specific questions. Maybe you would answer them. Would you keep in the next Labour Party, whatever we're going to call it, and if you get to lead the party, would you keep the, uh, the income tax rises, the non-doms, the mansion tax rises? Because people who were never going to pay those taxes still thought there must be some people who thought you are not the party of aspiration. I think the cumulative Would effect. You keep those I think I think the cumulative effect of many of those messages and those policies made people fearful about us being on their side. Now I'm, I'm not going to answer those questions because it's too early to go through policy well, you, you by, kind of by policy, but. I think that the cumulative message of those policies was felt that actually the Labour Party wasn't on the side of people getting on and going ahead and wanting their children to do better and uh, passing down uh, the, the money towards them. So we do have to look uh, at those because as Pat said, you know, we're on the side uh, of the underprivileged, we're on the side of national health service, we're on the side of a fantastic state education system, but we're also on the side uh, of, of those families who want to shop at John Lewis and go on holiday uh, and build the extension, okay. and, and that wasn't coming through in Worcester or Southampton or Lincoln or Carlisle, uh, and that's where we lost. Uh, just that last, it sounds to me like you are going to stand. I think, every, to I, think, it? I think everybody who loves the Labour Party, as I do, needs to get involved now, and we need to hear as many voices as many politicians, as many councillors uh, to be involved in this conversation because we are in a really deep hole and we need everyone to pull together and, and really have it out about what went wrong and what went right. And I do want to be one right. of those uh, voices, but it's more than about okay. just uh, leadership. It's about how the party's led and about the political philosophy behind it. Serious question, though. I know you've been asked it before, but I mean, is your first name a problem when it comes to you know, campaigning in Scotland and I things think, like that? I, I, th I think all of these issues are are superficial relative to the really big problem of just, just families in Britain feeling that the Labour Party is on their side and we had as many policies as we like but the message and the instinct wasn't trusted. Okay, I just want to bring Pat McFadden back in. I mean, you like what you're hearing from Tristan Hunt there in terms of that analysis. Presumably. It's, it's almost like, you know, we're all Blairites now. I'm more interested in the argument than the person at the moment. Indeed, in but truth. I mean, you know, you, you, you agree Look, a lot I've of the points. great admiration for Tristram, we're friends and colleagues, uh, but I want to give a, a serious answer to your question. We don't just need a new person at the top of the Labour Party. After Thursday, we need a new and fundamentally different argument. And I will make my judgment in this leadership contest on who 
meets that test. Because anyone who ducks things and says we can't say that because it may offend some internal audience or that's too difficult is going to be ducking the challenge. And the scale of the defeat uh, makes the challenge pretty clear. Okay, gentlemen, thank you both very much indeed. Very interesting. Pat McFadden and Tristram Hunt as we take their live shots of uh, the Prime Minister.